It's the late 50s and the small town of Cayuga, New Mexico is crowding into the local high school for the first basketball game of the season. Radio disc jockey Everett accompanies switchboard operator Faye to her night shift before signing on to present his show. But when both are interrupted by distorted signals and mysterious phone calls, the pair set out to discover the source of these strange events. Number please. Hello? The opening moments of The Vast of Night represent the film as an episode of a sort of Twilight Zone pastiche called Paradox Theatre. It's even playing out on a retro TV, complete with Rod Serling-esque voiceover. But as the camera pushes in and the movie fades onto view full screen, it segues into this immediately confident, crisply lit and immaculately realised 1950s world. Everett is holding court at the game before heading out. He's chatting with Faye in dialogue that's incredibly fast-paced and dense with period-appropriate slang and references. You have lines like, Whoa, cut the gas, cube, you were a mile wide, abound. The car park is crammed with classic vehicles and en route to their shifts, the lead to discuss that kind of heady utopian future full of fantastical machines that 50s sci-fi was so fond of. But beneath that retro styling of the setting, there's a bold confidence to director Andrew Patterson's vision. The film unfolds mostly as a series of long takes, often as dynamic as the opening. In one bravura sequence, the camera speeds through the town spanning the entire setting of the film while dipping briefly into the basketball game where the whole rest of the town is gathered completely oblivious to what's going on. It's an amazing stylistic touch that really shocks the audience. But mostly, the film is the opposite. It's slow moving or static shots with one character speaking on screen for long periods and sometimes even off screen. In fact, during one such monologue, the film fades to black, leaving the viewer with the impression that they're listening to an old fashioned radio drama more than watching a movie. Now, if that sounds dry or pretentious, rest assured, the slick dialogue and striking visual style go a long way towards making the film engrossing. And that slow burn approach starts to ratchet up the tension, encouraging you to sort of lean in, listen up, placing you firmly on the edge of your seat for the brisk runtime of just 91 minutes, which by the way, I've got to say, love a good film, love a good short film. As the story becomes more involved, the genre elements come to the fore, and ultimately it becomes this really chilling movie with a sort of existential bent, albeit one without any blood or jump scares. It's not a schlocky film, although it obviously has warm feelings towards 50s B-movies and anthology TV, both of which it takes many cues from. But instead I think it's a, it's a kind of clever and ambiguous sci-fi story, peppered with this well-researched, well-thought-through historical subtext. The film doesn't feel like it's set in the 50s because the director liked the way the cars looked. It feels like it has much more to do with the historical context of the kind of politics of the time. There's a really strong sense of paranoia that runs throughout the film and that's very much to do with the Cold War, which was just beginning to really kick off at this point. And then there's also quite a lot around the social mores, around race and how women were treated. Um, that's very much relevant now and is to do with how much distrust or disbelief there was for those people and their experiences and it all ties in to the plot in really clever albeit quite small ways. Now that story is fab and it's one I won't spoil although I'd love to discuss it with you in the comments below but what's really worth noting is the economy with which it's told. Mostly it's second-hand reporting, just like the BBC classic horror Ghostwatch, and even the two very likeable leads get fairly limited backstory. There's plenty left for the viewers to infer. That light plot is really bolstered by the terrific craft of the film, where there's not literally a single wasted minute, and a number of ingenious stylistic devices allow the low and apparently self-financed budget to shine. There's a sense throughout the film that instead of picking an easy, cheap option, the filmmakers instead repeatedly chose a distinctive, creative solution that complements the tone of the movie. So that's The Vast of Night, which takes this incredibly clever sci-fi premise, humanises it with some fab character writing, and props up its limited budget with stylish and effective filmmaking. The end result is a fantastic debut for director Andrew Patterson, and a triumph of independent genre filmmaking. It's currently available on Amazon Prime, and I highly recommend you go and watch it. 
It did great business on the festival circuit too, and I would love to see this on the big screen. So fingers crossed, cinemas can reopen soon and we get a chance to go and do that somewhere. That's it from me, but I know that this film has a little bit of a cult following already and there's a lot to discuss in its themes, its execution and that ending. So let's have a chat in the comments. Have a good one. Bye for now.